Um, all right, well, thank you everyone so much for being here. Thank you for joining us today for the Harvard Pre-Medical Programs Information Session. My name is Jacqueline Brinkhouse, and I am the Marketing Assistant and coordinate webinars for the Harvard Division of Continuing Education. We have a great information session in store for you today with our renowned experts and a student speaker. Before we get started, I would like to review a few housekeeping items. This information session will be recorded and a copy of the recording and presentation slides will be sent out to, to the email used to register today. I would also like to draw your attention to the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Throughout the presentation, if you have any questions for our speakers, please ask them in the Q&A feature, and we'll try to get to as many of them as possible during our Q&A session. There is also an option to ask questions anonymously if you'd like to do so. We will also not utilize the raise hand feature in this session, but again, please use the Q&A feature. To start, I'm gonna briefly outline today's format of the programming. First, Dr. Dennis Cullinane will give a pre-medical program overview, including com community statistics and program benefits and program highlights. Then Angela Lee, a current pre-medical program student, will join us briefly to discuss her experience. Next, Dennis will discuss our two pre-medical program tracks, our pre-medical, pre-dental, pre-veterinary track, and our new pre-physician assistance track, which we're offering for the very first time this admission cycle. We're very excited about. Next, Dr. Pamela Nurse will go over application requirements, deadlines, and program costs. We will then end the information session with a live Q&A with our two speakers, Dennis and Pam, and our student, Angeli. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce our two speakers. Dr. Dennis Cullinane is the director of Harvard's pre-medical program and is also an instructor at the Harvard Medical School and the Harvard School of Dental Medicine. Dr. Pamela Nurse is the coordinator of the Harvard pre-medical program. She is also a retired general surgeon who practice at the Mayo Regional Hospital. Dennis and Pam have an immense amount of expertise and invaluable insights into the medical community. They lead our pragmatic individualized pre-medical program and will share essential information with you today. I will now hand it over to Dennis. Great, thank you, Jacqueline. I'm super excited and I know Pam is super excited to be sharing this time with you folks. This is actually our first webinar, so hopefully we won't seem like it's our first webinar, but we're, we're very excited about that because this is the first time we've reached out to you, our candidates, prior to, to your being uh, matriculated to Harvard. And so we're excited to be able to make that contact instead of just reading your, your applications. So that is a bonus for us. Great, so who are these pre-med, pre-dental, pre-vet, pre-physician assistant students um, who are coming to Harvard? So many of them are career changers, probably like many of you who are, working in wherever, they might be on Wall Street, they might be nurses, they might be accountants or English teachers. And so they've decided, they've always had in the back of their mind, oh, you know, I'm interested in serving people, I'm interested in medicine, but they never really either had the background or they never really committed to it. And now they're committing to it, just like you are. And so these career changers are people who are switching kind of midstream and uh, and seriously looking at medicine as a career. And we also have record enhancers who might might also be in the audience. And those are people who, you know, maybe they've they've had medicine in their mind the entire time, but they just haven't entirely focused or they haven't had the right circumstances to be super successful in preparing for a program in medicine. And so that's our job. Our job, we're here for the career changers. We're here for the record enhancers. And our successful applicants are people with competitive GPAs and prior experience in healthcare. And that's that's really no different from medical schools. Um, we, we don't look at, uh, we don't have a requirement for um, MCATs like the med schools do. We do look at your MCAT as kind of supporting information. But really, we're looking for someone who's got an ability academic ability, but also a demonstrated interest and commitment to healthcare. And so either volunteering or working in healthcare is very helpful for admissions to our program. Great, so 
if we look at our kind of a slice of our community or a snapshot of our community, the average age is about 27 for our students. And that actually is, uh, you have to kind of look at that in the lens of a pretty wide standard deviation. So we have students who are a year out of undergrad. We have students who are in their, excuse me, in their 40s. So, um, so the average age, you know, if, if you're looking at that and you're saying, oh, that's not me, it is you. You're, you're definitely in there. Um, about two thirds of our students have healthcare work experience, um, which is really great. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later about how Boston is an amazing place to get healthcare experience. Um, and the average number of years between earning their undergrad degree and coming to the program is um, between two and three. Um, our average undergrad GPA is 3.6, but again, you know, there's a standard deviation there. So if you don't see yourself at 3.6, it does not mean you're not a good candidate. Um, and our top undergrad majors are all over the place, like I was saying. So psychology, nursing, neuroscience, biology, we have English majors, math majors, engineers. They're coming from every, every direction. And, you know, that really, that that's a strength. That's a strength for you that you're coming from a different background, you know, like medieval literature. That's that's a cool background to have. So where do our students matriculate after our program? They matriculate everywhere. So, you know, it could be um, this this list is pretty extensive, uh, includes Cornell, includes Johns Hopkins, it includes Tufts, and, and of course, it includes Harvard. I had to include Tufts because Dr. Nurse graduated from Tufts. Okay, so program highlights. We have an individualized curriculum. So we work with you and your specific background and try to figure out what you need, what your weaknesses are, what your strengths are, and in that way, augment your application status and your application potential for medical, dental, veterinary, um, and PA programs. We also have personalized advising. We recommend that you meet with either one of us once a month, once a semester, I almost said once a month. You can meet once a month if you want. That's the beauty of it. You can meet as frequently as you would like or as our schedules allow. Um, but the personalized advising is great because we get to know you, you get to know us, and we get to stay in touch and keep track of your trajectory. Uh, another great thing about the program is our core courses, courses are taught by Harvard faculty, and, and I would say the vast majority of our electives are taught by Harvard faculty. That includes the medical school, that includes the dental school, that includes the School of Public Health, um, like for a statistics course, and that includes the undergraduate campus and um, the graduate school of arts and sciences. So we also have a very flexible course schedule, which is great for those who have families, those who are working during the day. So our courses are often in the evening. They can be on weekends, which is, is very helpful when you're an adult who's busy, as you all are. Um, we have an engaged clinical community, which is really fun. On Fridays, we have our clinician chat. So we have a clinician from Harvard Medical School or one of the affiliated hospitals coming in and speaking with you live on Zoom. Uh, this week we have um, Dr. Dana Stearns, who's coming from MGH. Uh, he's a regular for us, but we have a variety. We even have some medical students who come and, and talk with our students. So that's, that's a really fun thing to do. Um, and you also meet some of these clinicians during the new student orientation. And we have clinical and research opportunities. Uh, they abound in, in Boston. So, so Harvard, Tufts, BU, all these schools are, are, you can add those to all the hospitals that we have. We have a slew of world-class hospitals with research and, and clinical opportunities. And it's, it's, we've never had a problem with a student getting some kind of clinical opportunity from one of these institutions, which is really great. And the program benefits are extensive. So we have financial aid eligibility. You'll be a Harvard student, so you're eligible for financial aid. We have a new student orientation, which actually I'm right about now starting to plan. It's the end of August before classes start. So you'll get to meet each other. Um, you, can, you can ask Angelie about her experience with that, but 
you get to meet each other, you get to meet some of the faculty who teach, you get to meet some of the clinicians who give you advice during the year. Uh, it's a it's a really great opportunity to like talk about Cambridge, talk about Boston, talk about medical issues, um, <clears throat> medical careers, medical life, and and what's it like to be a clinician and have a family and balance those. Uh, sponsorship is something that uh, we also do, and um, we can answer any questions about that. Um, and that is a way to augment your application as well. Uh, career services. So we we uh, have a career services, basically a career services office, uh, which can work with you. Um, and you get Harvard student status and university access. So you are a Harvard student, you get access to the universities, the libraries, to the buildings, um, to the med school buildings, which is really cool. And so now I will introduce Angelia, one of our star students. Thanks, Dennis. Hi, everyone. My name's Anjali. Um, I'm about a year and a half into my journey at Harvard's pre-med program. Before the program, I went to undergrad at Arizona State University, where I majored in nursing. I became a registered nurse and started immediately in the emergency department, which is where I decided I wanted to further my career by becoming a physician. So I'm now over at Beth Israel in Boston. After researching and comparing this program to some competitors, I was really drawn to this program um, because of the opportunity for sponsorship, as well as the personalized course map. With the course map, uh, my wonderful advisors were able to look through all of my undergrad courses and design a course map where I needed to fill in some gaps, which is super helpful since all the requirements can be really confusing, of which I've really enjoyed biology and organic chemistry the most so far. I know that's controversial with Orgo, but that's just how I feel. Um, overall, I have really just appreciated the sense of community that I've built with everyone. We're all working. We're all taking classes. It's a really great group to be with. Once I complete the program, I hope to go to medical school. I'm highly interested in orthopedics, so I would love to steer my career in that direction with research and practice. And I really hope to have amazing colleagues like Dr. Kulinane and Dr. Nurse every step of the way. Um, but overall, I just highly recommend the program. Um, we can answer some questions in the Q&A later, but I'll just hand it back to Dennis. Great, thank you, Anjali. So I'd like to talk a little bit about our program tracks. So we have two, <clears throat> excuse me, two major divisions to our program tracks. We have what we call the pre-medical track, which is medical school, dental school, and veterinary school. And these prepare you obviously for, for medical school, both allopatric and osteopathic, so MD and DO and dental school and veter veterinary school. And the, the curriculum for us is on campus with four courses. We have electives also available online and, in per and uh, on campus. And the courses are available weekends and evenings. So like I was saying earlier, it's, it's, it's a very um, flexible schedule for you who is working, have family, um, have commitments as an adult. And now we have a super exciting new uh, track that we've added, and hopefully you will be in our first cohort uh, if you're applying this year. So we have a pre-physician assistant track, and I know some schools are starting to change the name to pre-physician associate track or pre-physician associate, but we'll stick with pre-physician assistant for now. So obviously this prepares you for physician assistant school, um, which is exciting, very exciting. And the curriculum's a little bit different, as you know, from, from the pre-medical program track, but uh, we'll, we will certainly get into that when you matriculate to Harvard. So the curriculum is very much online. So uh, the, the physician assistant programs are a little more flexible about applicants who are taking online courses. We do obviously have on-campus courses. Um, and so you have your opportunity to do both or either, which is exciting. And we have some bonuses here. I'm just gonna move my 
So as a Harvard student, you have Harvard student status and you have access, as I was saying, to, to Harvard University as a student. You get your Harvard University ID, you can go to the libraries, Harvard museums, um, all the Harvard buildings. You will become a Harvard Extension alumni uh, or alumnus and also a Harvard University alumnus. So um, you, you become a, a part of the Harvard Extension Alumni Association and the Harvard Alumni Association. Great. And now I would like to introduce Dr. Pam Nurse, who is our coordinator. Thanks, Dennis. Um, as you are all aware, we are currently in our application cycle. And so I am going to go over some of the nuts and bolts of the actual application process with you all. Um, we do have some eligibility requirements. Uh, there are a few categories of people who, unfortunately, we cannot accept. Um, first of all, we are a post-baccalaureate program, so you do need to have completed a bachelor's degree from an accredited institution. Um, when I say it needs to be completed, it needs to be awarded. If you have completed all the requirements, but they're not going to award your degree until the end of May, unfortunately, we will not be able to consider your application this cycle. You would need to wait until next year. But as long as that degree has been awarded, you are eligible to apply. The second bullet point here is less of an eligibility requirement and more of a strong suggestion. We look for people who have demonstrated academic achievement, particularly in the sciences. If you have not taken any sciences, no worries. As Dennis said, we are open to career changers. That's one of the main reasons we're here. But if you have taken science coursework, we look for evidence that we believe you'll be able to handle what is a fairly rigorous curriculum in our program. We also look for activities related to the healthcare field. We like to see that you're making an informed decision about your career in medicine. Uh, if you're interested in being a PA, we would like to see at least that you have done some shadowing with PAs so you understand what the profession is about. Similarly, if you are interested in medicine or dentistry or veterinary medicine, we like to see that you have taken some active steps to gain practical experience in those fields so that you truly understand what you are getting into. Um, Unfortunately, the reality of medicine is not always the same as an idealized version that people think about. So we like to see that you've taken that next step to confirm your interest before you get in deeply into the program and perhaps decide that this is not for you. Um, these are not absolute requirements, but they are strongly suggested and they will increase your chances of a successful application. We also need to know that you are in good academic standing at the Division of Continuing Education at Harvard. And that's, this is only for people who have previously taken coursework through the Extension School or the Summer School. Good academic standing for our program is a GPA of three or above. So if you have taken courses through extension or summer school before and your GPA is below this level, unfortunately, we will not be able to accept you until you take additional coursework and bring that GPA up above the three. Um, we are only able to accept US citizens or permanent residents. And again, if you're a permanent resident, we do need you to have received the, dream, the, the green card. Um, I had a question actually just today from someone about, I've, I'm waiting for my green card. I've put in the paperwork and it's pending. Can I apply? And the answer, unfortunately, is no. It, it needs to be in hand. But if you are a citizen or a permanent resident, yes, you are eligible to apply. 
And if English is not your first language, we do need to have you meet the English language proficiency requirement. And there's a couple of ways to do that. If you have attended undergraduate or graduate school at an English language institution, you're eligible. If you have not done that, there are a number of exams that you can take to, pro to prove proficiency. Um, we accept the TOEFL exam. Um, we accept the International English Language Testing System academic exam, uh, the Pearson Test of English academic, and the Duolingual, Duolingual, ah, can't talk, Duolingo English test. Um, all of these requirements are on our website. If you go to the Extension School website and search for English proficiency, you will be able to find them and those need to be met before you're allowed to register for classes. As I said, the applications are currently open. The cycle opens every year on February 1st and the application cycle generally closes on May 1st. Be warned that we do accept students on a rolling basis, so very occasionally we can fill the program before we reach that May 1st deadline. Um, if this happens, we shut the application portal down, you will not be able to access it. So word to the wise, you may not wait, want to wait until the very last minute to apply. Um, if you are accepted, we do need you to accept or decline the offer officially in the application portal by June 1st. Otherwise, unfortunately, we have to rescind the offer of, of admission. In order to apply, there are a number of things you need to send us. You need to fill out the online application and you can get to that through the My DCE portal. Instructions to do this are on our How to Apply web page. Um, there is a $50 non-refundable application processing fee. We do have an option for a fee waiver. If you are experiencing financial difficulty, please email our office and talk to us about that. Uh, but once the application fee is paid, it is non-refundable. We ask for a personal statement. We're looking for for an essay of roughly 500 words. We don't actually count words. It doesn't have to be that precise, but in the neighborhood of 500 words on the subject of why are you interested in a career in the medical field? Um, we want to know who you are, what brought you to this decision, what makes you tick? Why are you doing this? Tell us that in the essay, please. Um, would like to see a copy of your resume or, and or CV. Um, we just, again, want to know what your past experiences are. Uh, what's your educational history? What is your work history? What is your healthcare experience history? The resume is the place to tell us all that. And we need copies of official transcripts from every school you have attended, whether you received a degree from that school or not. Um, even if your credits transferred to another institution, we still need to see the transcript. If you attended an international school, you need to have that degree verified. Uh, the Extension School accepts degree verification from CED and IEE. And again, there's more information on our how to apply page on the website with links to those agencies and instructions on how to get those credentials to us. Um, when you send the transcripts, a lot of schools are doing electronic transcripts these days. Please request that the transcripts be sent specifically to our email address, which is also on the website and will be included on the final slide of this presentation. Sometimes people will request that their transcripts be sent to Harvard University. And honestly, we have no idea where they go. When people send them to Harvard University, they disappear into the ether. We never see them. Um, so please make sure your transcripts come directly to our office. If you are mailing them, 
hard copy. Again, they have to be official, which means they either need to come directly from your school's registrar's office, or if the school has sent them to you, you can forward them to us in another envelope, but the original envelope needs to be sealed and unopened for it to remain an official transcript. Um, we cannot accept transcripts sent from applicants. We cannot accept uh, transcripts that have been opened by anyone other than us. Um, it's also extremely important that everything on this list reach our office by close of business on May 1st. And for us, that's 5 p.m. Eastern time. If we do not have all of these materials by the close of the application cycle, five o'clock on May 1st, unfortunately, we will not be able to review your application. And a little bit about the uh, course costs. Our program does not have a fixed curriculum. So when students are accepted, they are awarded uh, a requirement, they're a, a credit requirement, if you will, um, which represents what we think is most likely to make you the most competitive applicant for professional school in a few years. For the pre-med track, it ranges anywhere from 20 to 32 credits. For the pre-PA track, which have a broader requirement prerequisite range, it runs from 32 to 44. And so the total cost of the program depends on how many credits you are assigned. Um, for the current academic year, 2022-2023, the cost of a four credit course is $1,980. Uh, I don't know if tuition costs have been set for next year, but those will be posted on the Extension School website when they're available. So once you know what your credit requirement is going to be, you can do the math to figure out how much the program is going to cost you. Um, there are are no additional fees or hidden costs. It's all a tuition until you get to the end. If you are requesting sponsorship, there is a fee to request sponsorship. But other than that, course tuition is the entire cost of the program. As a student enrolled in the pre-medical program, you get a couple of perks that are not available to people who are just registering for individual courses as individual students. Um, you may be eligible for an interest-free payment plan through the Student Financial Services Office. Ordinarily, when students register for courses, there is a payment date at the start of the semester. And if you don't pay in full by then, you're dropped from the course. As a program student, you may have the ability to arrange a payment plan and spread out the cost a little bit over the course of the semester. You may also be eligible for federal financial aid and uh, grant money. And I am not going to go into a whole lot of detail on that because honestly, financial aid regulations are incredibly Byzantine and complicated and I am not an expert. However, if you go to the Extension School website and that's uh, extension.harvard.edu and look at the um, paying for school tab at the top of the screen. It will put you in touch with the people in the student financial services office and they are wonderful. They have answers to all your questions about financial aid and payment plans. And one little known perk of being an enrolled student in the program is that you also get reduced summer school tuition. Ordinarily, the summer school courses are significantly more expensive than the extension school courses. They're very compressed. You get an entire semester crammed into seven weeks, and the cost goes up accordingly. Um, as an enrolled program student, though, you get to pay the same tuition rate for extension school and summer school across the board. If you are accepted in this application cycle and you want to take summer school courses, unfortunately, that tuition perk does not go into effect until you are officially admitted to the program. There's acceptance, then there's admitted to the program, and that happens 
in early June. So if you want to take summer school courses this summer, you probably want to wait until you're officially admitted in June to register. But once you're in the program, same tuition rate across the board. And that wraps it up for the application and financial information. And I'm going to turn things back over to Jacqueline for the Q&A session. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Pam. Now we're going to move into our Q&A session where Dennis, Pam, and Angelique will respond to your questions. There have been so many great pre-submitted questions and our team has gone through them to identify common themes. We've also monitored your questions coming through the Q&A section feature at the bottom. Um, we have so, so many great questions that have come in and we're going to try to answer as many as we can. So to start it off, Dennis and Pam, who is the typical pre-medical student? <laughs> uh, I, I can try to tackle this one, Pam. I, I would say the, the typical pre-medical student has, has probably taken science courses and in addition to their undergrad major, um, but they haven't fully committed to a career in medicine and science. And they've started to explore clinical opportunities, maybe worked for a year or six months at a hospital or at a clinic. Um, it, it's really hard to say tip, a typical pre-med student, but, but they're, I, you know, they're in their 20s. Uh, they could be later 20s, mid-20s, and they're very enthusiastic. Uh, we have a great community. That's one thing we haven't emphasized yet. And Angeli can probably speak to that too. Um, so I, I'll I'll leave the rest of that to Angeli and and Pam. <laughs> well, what I'd actually say is we don't have any typical students. No. Um, we we have an incredibly broad range. You know, we we have the slide that showed the statistics, but statistics are only part of the story. And like uh, Dennis said, there's a lot of standard deviation. Um, we have, we do have students who have taken some sciences, but we also have some students who are coming in with, you know, a major in history or English literature who have never set foot in the science building on their campuses. Um, we have students who are in their 20s, but uh, in, in this current group of students that we admitted in the last cycle, we actually have a student who is 60. So there is no typical. Um, we don't have a lot of absolutes. We have a broad range of life experiences. That's great. And kind of branching off of that a little bit, now that we have you here, Angelie, could you walk us through a typical day in your life as a Harvard pre-medical student? Yeah. So um, a lot of us will actually work and take classes at the same time. So um, I usually go to work for, um, I do either four or eight hour shifts at the hospital in addition to 12 hour shifts. So I can go to work for a couple of hours. And then a lot of my classes are at night. So they don't start until 6 p.m., which is great because it gives you all this opportunity to do work or research, whatever you want to do during the day. And then you go to class at night. Maybe I go to lecture or I'll go to section which is, you know, small group meetings, or I'll do a lab, um, which for, fits perfectly in the schedule. Angelie brings up a good point. Some of our students are full-time employees at, at hospitals or, you know, clinics or whatever. Some of them are part-time employees. Some of them are full-time students, but that's pretty rare. Most of our students are part-time students and are working either full-time or part-time. Mm -hmm. Does yeah, that sound the great, fair? The great thing about extension school is it is geared towards adult learners. So it it pretty much expects that you're going to be doing other things with your life as well. Right, right. And on that note, there's a ton of opportunity if you're looking for part time, if you're looking for full time, if you're looking for paid or unpaid, there is always something that you can do here. Um, and there's always people that can point you in that right direction, whether it's, you know, your advisors or other students or even your professors or your TAs. Cool. Awesome. And kind of you, you spoke a bit about the benefits, you know, that you see on a day-to-day -day basis. I was wondering what made you choose this program other over other programs you were researching? 
Angeli. I would say there were several reasons that I chose this program. I think one of the main things was um, the advising and the sponsorships, all those opportunities um, that we have a really close relationship. I see Dennis and Pam all the time. Um, they give me some great advice. Uh, if I ever need anything or need to make a connection, uh, they're right there and they know everyone. They're always willing to help, which I think is great. A lot of times in this journey, you really question yourself and you question what you're doing. I don't know if I should take this class or what elective should I add on? And they always have great advice. They always have an answer, which is hard. I mean, I didn't have any parents that went to college or worked in medicine, so I didn't have anybody to steer me in that direction. So it's really wonderful having them here to give me some advice because I don't know what I'm doing, but they do. <laughs> awesome. That is great to hear. And kind of on that note, um, a question in the chat we had is, do we offer letters of recommendation and what exactly is sponsorship? Ooh, hey, Emma, I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Sponsorship is something that is primarily of benefit to the pre-medical and pre-dental students. Um, it's actually a liability for the pre-PA students and veterinary schools do not require sponsorship letters or even accept them really. Um, most professional schools are going to require a certain number of recommendation letters and you are on your own as a student to collect those letters. Um, you can get them from undergraduate faculty. You can get them from extension school faculty. You can get them from job supervisors. We recommend that you get recommendation letters from a broad swath of people who know you in all the major areas of your life. Sponsorship is an option available for uh, pre-medical and pre-dental students where you collect your individual recommendation letters and they funnel to our department. And then it's often called a committee letter, but basically, hello, I'm the committee. Mm -hmm. um, we write a composite narrative letter um, introducing you as an individual to the admissions committees and working in excerpts from your individual recommendation letters to support our narrative about what a great applicant you are. Um, that sponsorship letter gets put together with the individual letters in a single packet, gets uploaded to the application sites as a single packet and fulfills the requirement for recommendation letters for most medical and dental schools. Um, PA schools still want a certain number of individual recommendation letters and a composite letter only counts as one. So even if I have seven component letters in that sponsorship letter, it's only going to count as one. So we do not recommend sponsorship letters for pre-PA students. You're much better off sending in your individual letters. Um, for veterinary schools, I think only one. Cummings, um, Tufts Cummings requires a letter from the committee, um, in which case we will happily write a letter indicating that you're a member of our program, but they do not uh, really want to see sponsorship letters to the extent that medical schools and dental schools do. Awesome. And in a similar vein, we had a couple other questions in the chat about do we offer any MCAT prep and are there any research or clinical opportunities affiliated with the program? So we do not endorse any particular MCAT prep. That's just a policy of ours. And I, I know some programs do, but we do not. Um, you will certainly get advice from other students about where they've had success. And it's a lot of that is individual based. So uh, if you're a highly disciplined person, you might not need MCAT prep because you're, you're carving out time to prep for the MCAT. If you're super busy or you're not quite as organized, you might need a course to, to kind of carve out that time and force you to do it. Um, you know, I, I would say that 90% of those programs is getting the discipline and carving out the time and forcing you to do the, the, uh, the practice, practice exams and preparation. 
Um, and sorry, what was the second part of that, Jacqueline? Um, if we sponsor any research opportunities or um... right. So we have one research opportunity that is directly linked to our program. It's with the Cambridge Health Alliance. And we, but it's a very small program and it's it's um, it's only a few, like a handful of students every year. But like I was saying earlier, you cannot swing a stick in Boston without hitting a world-class hospital. And, and literally they're begging for people. We get emails all the time from labs and from clinic, clinical people who interact with our program saying, hey, can you send me the name of some students? Uh, plus each hospital and Harvard Medical School have their own HR sites and they're advertising jobs all the time. Uh, uh, Anjali, we, I don't know if you wanna share your thoughts about that, but people coming through the, your program there at the BI. Yeah, so I would say there's tons of opportunity all of the time. Um, I think that, you know, other students are always telling me, you know, I found this through this person, or I think just the other day we got an email with um, all of the research opportunities that were available right now that are um, may not be associated with this program specifically, but they're associated with affiliated hospitals or, um, you know, just the school like Harvard in general. Um, and I actually looked through those those options. And I was, I thought there was a ton of great options on there. Um, and even if, you know, you aren't specifically sent something, there's always somebody who knows of something you can ask, you know, even just your peers or your professors, and there's always something available. I, it's safe to say that on occasion, I meet with students who say, oh, I'm, I'm looking for a clinical opportunity. And I never have a follow-up conversation where they say, I looked and I couldn't find anything. They always find something. And in fact, they're usually entertaining multiple offers. Like the, the, the second, the follow-up meeting with me is usually, which one should I take? Should I take the one at the BI in, in emergency medicine? Or should I take the one at the Brigham in orthopedics? You know, so it's, it's, it's like Anjali is saying, it, there are many, many opportunities and you just have to look and it doesn't take long. Even I met somebody in orientation last year um, when I was working at BI, they asked if they could come shadow a doctor in emergency medicine. And I thought of somebody I knew and I just connected the two and they were able to shadow and that had nothing to do with the program. We just met at orientation. Cool. Awesome. And this is going to be our last question of this session. Sorry that we couldn't get to everyone's question, um, but we hope that you found this discussion helpful. And on a similar note, what does the Harvard pre-medical community mean to you or what does it look like to you? Um, Angeli, Dennis, and Pamela. Oh man, I, it's honestly, it's everything to me. I moved from Arizona to Boston and I didn't know anybody. Um, and I was so worried about making friends. I, my best friends in the world are in the program with me. We meet all of the time. I would have no sense of direction without my advisors and my peers, my professors. Everyone's so helpful. I couldn't have been happier with my decision. Um, I think that it just means the world to me. It just put my life right on track, I think. <laughs> I, I would say for my part, I, I teach at the medical school and I run this program and it's, it's wonderful for me to see the students who are in medical school, but also to see these students who are trying to get there. And it's a puzzle for, for us to solve collectively as, a, as a, an advisor and a student, like Anjali is saying, but also as a community, it's a great, it's a really great sense of community with the students. There's so much fun when we get together in small groups or large groups. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, but I, I personally love interacting with a student and trying to solve that puzzle. Like, what are the weaknesses? What are the strengths? Like, what angles are you working in terms of your truth and your, your passion for medicine? Like, I, I always say, you know, just... It's got to come from the heart. When you're writing your personal statement, it has to come from the heart. And so, you know, we we meet with many many students, but every student is unique, as we were saying earlier. And it's just a fun, 
puzzle to solve. Pam? Yeah, um, once you become a part of this program, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're part of our group. And we take that very, very seriously. And we really, really want to see everyone in our group succeed. Um, you know, we're, we're rooting very, very hard for all of you. <laughs> we, we want you to succeed in your professional goals, and we will do everything that we can to make that happen. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dennis, Pam, and Anjali. Those were great insights and advice and great questions from all of you. Um, if we couldn't get to them, we'll provide some contact information um, on our next slide. Oh. And sorry about that. Um, that's going to conclude our presentation for today. Thank you, Dennis, Pam, for your insights, and thank you all for attending the program. Um, if we didn't get to your question, you can email us at hcp at extension.harvard.edu. And in our presentation deck that we're going to send out with this recording, we'll have all the links mentioned um, and our contact information. Please follow us on social media or visit our website to keep up on all of our programming. And within the next few days, a recording of this webinar and the presentation slides will be sent to the email address used to register. It was great to have so many of you join us. These were really great questions, and we hope you have a lovely rest of your day.